Okay, so today what we're going to be uh, uh, talking about is uh, some setup and uh, proper usage of a uh, of a saw stop uh, table saw. And uh, first few things that I want to talk about first is, you know, how, how do I um, how do you even go about uh, turning it on and also setting it up for you know um, cutting your uh, your pieces of wood. Now, first few, few things to point out. Every single time that we're using any type of saw in our wood shop, uh, fans have got to be on. And uh, that's one flaw uh, when it comes to using a saw stop is that um, while it has a little detection system, um, a little safety brake, if it ever comes in contact with uh, human flesh, you know, if your fingers do happen to come in contact with the blade, it initiates this brake. That brake is very sensitive to the point where if it has sawdust build up in that machine, it does initiate that brake. If you use something like wet wood, that's another indicator that's going to initiate that brake. Um, so to eliminate one of those factors of uh, building up sawdust in our table saw, uh, fan, fan, the fan has always got to be on. A um, couple of switches. Along the bottom side here with this table saw, make sure that switch is flipped on. You have a second switch here. There are two different lights that uh, come on when you first flip the switch. One saw a green light and a blinking red light. All that is is it just takes a little time for it to go through a stinking process, make sure that everything is a-okay with the machine and soon you get a saw green line. Students get a little bit hasty when they first turn on that switch. That red light is still blinking along with that saw green light. It's still in the stinking process and students already, they want to turn it on. And while the saw doesn't turn on, because it's still going through an indicator, wait for it to get a saw green light. Then by that time, what you can do, pull the paddle, you can pull the paddle, and you have that saw turn on. Pushing the paddle in, turns off the saw. Now, a couple of settings that we could be able to change. All right. The first setting that we could change, there's this wheel that's right here along the side. This wheel allows you to adjust your angle of the saw, if you ever wanted to tilt it, okay? So by turning this wheel, you can tilt your saw blade. One important factor to mention regarding these settings that you can change, whether you're adjusting your angle or the second wheel here that adjusts the height of the saw, whatever you're changing regarding that saw blade, you have to make sure that the wheel is not in motion. The saw blade cannot be turned on. So any change that you will make, the machine must be off. And as, as I mentioned earlier, the height of the blade can always change by turning this wheel, either raising it or lowering it. Whenever we are done for the day, whenever we are finished with all work, the saw blade is always lowered. This way we eliminate any risk of any kind of injury happen, happening, even if we are not working in the shop. So at the end of the shop period, we are having our blade lowered all the way down into the table saw. When it comes to uh, work uh, with, our, uh, with our table saw blade, I'm gonna use a piece of scrap wood here. It's the appropriate height of that saw blade. And for this, uh, for this demonstration here, I'm gonna raise up our guard. Um, we're always gonna be using, uh, we never wanna use something like plywood with our table saw. With the uh, different layers of the plywood, uh, we wouldn't wanna have any kind of uh, bits and pieces flaking off of that plywood striking an operator. It's a bit of a, um, it's a 
less safe type of wood to use when it comes, not, pro, not really appropriate when it comes to uh, using a, uh, a table saw. Um, so uh, first thing I want to mention with the types of wood that we want to use uh, or not want to use when it comes to a table saw, the first one, plywood, okay? Uh, other types of wood that uh, we wouldn't want to use when using a, uh, a table saw, any kind of woods that have nails, staples, paint, nails and staples, pretty straightforward. Anything that's going to strike that blade, um, creating damage to the blade or triggering that break, nails and staples can be one of those, uh, some of those items that can trigger that break from uh, initiating. Paint, uh, wet wood, other indicators of triggering that break and also damaging the blade. So no paint, uh, no wet wood. And also uh, any kind of wood that's, uh, that's knotty, uh, wood that has several different knots in it. Uh, we do not want to have any kind of wood that would have uh, several knots. It's a lot tougher uh, for the person that's making those cuts to do so. Um, and also, uh, as you're cutting those different knots, uh, those knots um, can sometimes break apart. Again, these are bits and pieces, much like that plywood that can come and strike the operator because looking at that saw blade, the teeth are pointing towards me, the operator. That blade is gonna to turn towards the operator and also that's that likelihood if you have debris coming off of like your not, your, uh, your not filled wood, also your plywood, more likely to come towards that operator. So in this case, I'm uh, going to be using just some little piece of pine in order to uh, uh, demonstrate, you know, proper height of, uh, of that saw blade. And as I was mentioning the uh, direction that the teeth are pointing on a table saw, the teeth are pointing towards the operator. So the kind of cut that this table saw is going to make is what's called a rip cut. Uh, a rip cut is where uh, the teeth, the blade is going to cut with the grain. And yesterday a student was uh, uh, talking about um, the different types of, uh, uh, or how you indicate grain of wood. Uh, and he said it as uh, the stripes found on wood or lines. Uh, and that's a, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, the stripes or lines that you would find on, uh, on your wood, um, that would be uh, the grain that you can find on uh, something like pine, okay? So if I'm making a rip cut, I'm gonna have my blade parallel to those lines. If I'm gonna be going perpendicular, crossing those lines, that's what's called a cross cut. A cross cut is never done uh, on a table saw, uh, unless ultimately necessary, and we'll talk about that in other videos, okay? But a cross cut is done with a miter saw or radial arm saw, where the blade is a, uh, turning away from the operator. But with a, uh, with a rip cut and a table saw having its blade turning towards the operator, you're more likely to have kickback when making a cross cut. Um, so, in order to have as uh, less likelihood of having that kickback, uh, a rip cut is always done on a table saw. And uh, also, one last wood to avoid, warped wood. Again, we're looking to eliminate any chance of having kickback or debris coming towards the operator. Uh, wood such as uh, um, that of being warped, very difficult to cut, and uh, makes it a lot more stressful in the blade. And again, you run that risk of having more kickback. Uh, so, the height of my blade, I want to have uh, anywhere from like eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch uh, above, showing above that piece of wood. You know, why would I want to have uh, uh, so little uh, of that blade showing? Why can't I just have uh, that blade so that way I don't have to worry about height? Why can't I have it raised up all the way? Um, my best way of explaining it is that you are looking to have 
as little of chance of your, uh, of your digits coming in contact with that blade. By having as little of that blade showing, um, you are gonna be less likely of having any kind of contact, uh, having your fingers touching that blade. Uh, also, another item I gotta point out here, uh, use of this fence, okay? Um, the fence is here as a guide. Uh, in order for you to make a straight cut, um, but also uh, with that blade turned towards the operator, you do have that same risk of having that uh, uh, wood binding up in that blade. So you never want to have uh, wood that's going to be any smaller than the size of this blade. Okay, so if your wood is going to be uh, smaller than the size of the blade, uh, there's more of a chance of having it caught between the saw blade and the fence, essentially making a pitching machine at that point. So you don't want to use anything that's going to be too small and binding up in that blade and coming directly back at that operator. You want to make sure that your wood's going to be long enough uh, in order to not get caught up between that blade and that fence. And of course, when you make that cut to eliminate that binding, always push your material through the table saw. And like I do in my class, uh, table saw is always done with a friend. One, per, uh, one friend to actually push the wood through the table saw and the friend on the other side that's going to receive that wood. Uh, again, eliminating any chance of binding, uh, no chance of it getting uh, kicked back toward the operator. Um, also, another item is what if you're dealing with narrow cuts? Anything that's gonna be narrower than four inches, use a push stick, okay? A push stick is used in order to uh, eliminate that chance of your fingers again coming in contact with that blade. And uh, um, if you were to have uh, any contact with the blade, the push stick is what's going to be actually coming in contact with that blade. Um, and we'd rather have uh, a, a push stick get ruined than have our digits uh, risk any kind of uh, uh, danger of cuts and uh, uh, inflicting injury on you. It's easy to replace a push stick, but uh, we can never be able to replace our fingers as easy. So uh, um, a few different factors to be aware of. And one thing I got to also point out is this tool here, and this is called a miter. Remember I was talking about uh, cross cuts. Uh, we're looking to avoid cross cuts being made on a table saw, uh, but if necessary, if this is the uh, only factor that we um, have, only tool that we have to best make a cross cut, uh, the miter is what's going to be used. And the miter is measured by degrees. So it's not measured by inches, it's measured by degrees when using this, uh, this miter. And uh, when I want to use this miter, uh, the miter is going to be used if ever uh, the wood that we're looking to cut is too wide to use on our radio arm saw or miter saw. But, uh, but the miter on a table saw is what's gonna be used for those longer cuts, longer cross cuts, um, especially if we're looking to make uh, something like an angled cut on our, uh, on, on our uh, uh, table saw. Now, uh, again, very easy to use. You have a channel here, uh, two different channels in order to fit the, uh, to fit the miter, and the miter has that ability to eliminate kickback because it has that fence uh, in order to support uh, your, uh, your wood in order to cut through that table saw. So miter is here for, uh, as an accessory to be able to do that kind of cross cut uh, on a table saw. And that concludes our discussion regarding a table saw. Thank you.